the internet. It can be a pretty interesting place to find some crazy off-road videos. And one of the undeniable celebrities of the web finds himself deep in the skeg every time he rides. And by the number of views his videos get, I'm guessing that you already know who I'm talking about. First run, he was in two-wheel drive by accident, so he's ready, four-wheel drive. When we first, uh, we lived uh, near Saskatoon, and we had a couple, that's where the name actually came from. It's part of my, first part is my, first part of my last name, and the last part, we used to own a couple old Land Cruisers. <laughs> that's where the cruiser came from. And uh, we'd go out smash around with some friends, and. I would, it started just taking pictures and then I got a little picture camera that did video also. So we do a little video and made a YouTube account in 2006, I think, and would just upload to, you know, so your buddies could see how they did and stuff like that. And, and then uh, 2007, we moved up here and no one really went out with trucks. Everyone had quads. So I bought my first Polaris 500. With over 300,000 subscribers on YouTube and videos that have hit past 7 million views, uh, Osta Cruiser is pretty popular amongst the off-road community, but even amongst just regular viewers. And so I wanted to ask him, what's the secret behind all these videos? I think a lot of people can identify with going out with your buddies and having a good time. Like we, there, there isn't a day when you go home and your your guts don't hurt from laughing most of the day. Like you've seen a bit of our banter back and forth. Like it's 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 the whole day like that. And trails we have is are pretty, you know, maybe not the same as other parts of the world. Like we've had the opportunity to go uh, deep down in the south in the States and it's just a completely different terrain as far as clay and gumbo and and our, our stuff up here. We have a lot of muskeg, looser type soil that maybe you don't find other places. So maybe that brings a lot of viewers in. I think the builds too, you get new builds, new machine comes out and get opportunity to do a new build. And I think a lot of people kind of stay tuned for that. They're interested, say like the Maverick X3 came out, they're interested in X3 and you know, what it can do, what it can't do, stuff like that. I think that's a big part of it too. You see the forest fire went through here a couple years ago. It's a super burned out area. Uh, it's pretty crazy. It was pretty scary. It's not too far from where we live, but far enough where <laughs> we weren't threatened. Right on, so yeah, I can't wait to get unloaded, get on the trail and see what it's like. I don't know. We haven't been up here since last fall, so who knows? <laughs> As Dave mentions muskeg or skeg as they call it, you gotta realize that this ain't your normal Sunday ride. This stuff is deep, it's thick, and even the biggest and baddest builds are gonna get stuck here. Muskeg is, is like, it's like a floating mat of grass on top of, of water. So you get out into a muskeg meadow where the trail goes across and you kind of have to be really ginger on the throttle. If you pin it, you cut through that mat and, and you're stuck. And, no trees grow in muskeg, just the nature of the beast. They'd never be able to support themselves. There's nothing to winch to. So you get into a big open field like that and you gotta be really careful on the throttle. If you start to get dig down, you gotta jump off, help your machine and keep it going. Um, and then there's the part uh, on the trails that's more like almost like a peat moss. What it is is just decaying vegetation and it's a looser type soil. A lot of times there's no tree roots or anything because again, trees don't grow in that kind of stuff. And, so that's what's great where we ride. A lot of times you can just you can just really lay on the throttle and usually there's no consequences because you're not gonna hook a root and snap axles or blow dips and stuff like that. But yeah, it's just a looser type rotting kind of vegetation. Like uh, it doesn't really smell like everyone thinks it's the most horrible smell. It must smell, it looks like it stinks, but it doesn't really smell. It's just organic, I guess. A normal ride, say like if I hosted a ride, Kilometers wise, you know, you'd be maybe eight or nine, 10 kilometers <laughs> tops for a whole day of work. And and you, sometimes you really got to fight for it. We've been riding with the same crew almost right from the start and it's just a good bunch of guys and, and someone breaks down or needs help, which we've had a lot of this last couple of days and everyone's there to pitch in and help out. And without that, it would just, it wouldn't be any fun, right? If you're out there struggling by yourself. 
you need someone kind of there to crap talk you and keep you going and throw you the winch line. And it can be uh, short distances and, and a lot of effort to get there. But you, you, at the end of the day, if you do make it, man, it's, it's an accomplishment. <laughs> While I was excited to ride in the Skeg, the truth is on this trip, I wanted to follow Ostacruiser and the rest of his crew and see exactly what kind of stuff would ensue. People follow the videos, the older videos like A Trail and P Trail. And you've noticed lately the water for whatever reason just keeps rising higher and higher. So we haven't really rid much around here the last few years. So we've been kind of going up. A friend of ours has a cabin boat an hour and a half from here north. And uh, it's really good trails up there. Not a lot of people ride the trails in the summer up there. So you're kind of out there by yourself. A full year or year and a half ago, it would be uh, not as much uh, moisture on top. It would be typically a lot more dry and it would be a lot easier to make it further than we did. Uh, last fall, we seen quite a bit of moisture. And then, uh, so that would be about seven months ago was the last time we were there. So we came here again, hoping, <laughs> hoping the moisture receded and it, it was more than we've ever seen. So. Uh, when you get really, really loose, juicy, there's just no traction and you hit a rut and, and, and you're not going anywhere without winching. And with a smaller group, we, we could have made it around or whatever, but with what we had, we, <laughs> we took a couple good shots at it, but you know, a lot of times the muskeg wins. <laughs> it wasn't too long into the ride that I realized that Ostacruiser isn't your typical internet diva. This isn't an ego thing. It's really more of a group that's helped Ostacruiser come to where he is today. Without, uh, you know, the good group of friends, I don't, you know, it wouldn't be worth going out. Say me and my wife, if we go out, we get something new, we want to test something, we'll go out quick and test it. But as far as a group ride, that's 90% of the fun is getting together with your friends. And, and it is super important to have good buddies. Like I said, we've had the same riding group for nine going on 10 years now. And, and we've had that group because like I said, everyone helps each other out. Everyone's got a good attitude. No matter what happens in the day, no one really throws in the towel. You just got to do what you got to do to get back home at the end of the day, get your machines back on the trailer, no matter what condition the machines are in. <laughs> yeah, that's a win. You can get back to the trailer, but yeah, I think the group aspect of it is, is one of the most important things. One of the hallmarks of Ostacruiser are his crazy builds, and this season is nothing short of incredible. I mean, most people's pickup trucks don't have tires this big on them. For this year, in the winter, we took the lift off so we could run the tracks and turned out to be a bust. We didn't get any snow, so I didn't really put any miles on. So we got the Catvost lift back on. And, and last fall, I threw those 34 and a halfs on just to kind of see, not expecting them to, for the bike to turn them very well. And man, that XMR has got a lower gear transmission and with STM clutches, it really turns them great. And so they went back on again this year. You get all that extra clearance and height and it handles it good and I haven't really broke anything yet. So we're just gonna keep running them. It's usually a really great, reliable machine. And like I said, there's features of it that help it in the deep skeg, deep water. The Maverick, we are trying to do a view of a, like a dual purpose build. So snorkel it, you know, clutch it, run bigger tires, run some better suspension, throw the 34 and a halfs. If you got a rally that you wanna take your side by side to, be able to handle most stuff. If you wanna come back and say in the fall, we wanna to try to make a trip to like Mohawk or something like that. So we're gonna throw a halo locker in the front some more trail friendly type tires on it and, and be, be able to have a build that basically you can almost do anything with from muskeg to rock crawling and then actually hit some sand dunes for what it's made for. Even if you threw the stock tires back on, man, she's a, she's a missile. <laughs> The first meadow that we made it to was pretty insane. I mean, we didn't make it in a hundred yards and the skeg got juicy. The plan for the day was, uh, it's actually a really nice loop. Like it'd be about an eight or 10 kilometer loop. Uh, and it loops right back to almost where we, where we launched from. And uh, it's a great ride. And, and if you get through those first two meadows, <laughs> you get onto some a bit more of a trail and it opens up again and then goes back to trail and it's actually a really great ride. And it would have been last spring was the last time we actually completed the loop. We tried twice last fall. And like I said, it just, it's a lot more loose and a lot more water than it usually is. So it just makes everything a lot more tough. If you had, like I said, a smaller group with say four, four or five guys, um, you can move a lot quicker. You know, you, you, you get a couple machines out, a couple machines make it and boom, you're on to the next one. But you get a bigger group, you start to get 10 or 12 guys or whatever. By the time you get 10 or 12 guys through the first hole, you know, there's a couple hours. Next hole, there's a few more hours. A lot, a lot more looser and a lot more water laying around than, than I had anticipated. So 
it was it was tough. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> She's thick. Oh, so thick. Usually we make it a little further. She's nasty. Uh well, so everybody running like 32s and 34s are getting stuck out here real bad. And we're running a sweet set of stock 27s. They might be 26s. Right now they're about 28s with the mud that's packed in and uh, she gone. <laughs> it's stuck. So we're going to pull it out. I mean, literally you could swim in the uh, lower uh, throttle area of this thing right now, but it did pretty good getting where it's going. Well, we didn't make it very far in the first meadow. We did find a second one that offered up a bit of a contest. Was it us just wanting to see folks get stuck? Maybe, but it made for a really good afternoon. Basically, we tried the first area. You know, it was a no-go. <laughs> like we and winched out, it got turned around, and uh, so we tried Plan B, another another trail we knew about, and it was no better. So basically, uh, AJ threw up fifty dollars to whoever could make it the furthest. And our one good buddy Blackie, he runs nitrous and a big boar kid on his renegade with assassinators and he skimmed right over the first part which was terrible and, and made it to the solid stuff and 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 he was away so he I think he was the clear winner yesterday. We had another buddy Derek there with his Maverick and he did really well too. He made it right over that and surprised me. I, I thought there was no way I thought that thing was sinking down or whatever, but uh, we've 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 stuck a lot of bikes in that area and, and had to pull them out and so yeah, plan B. It didn't pan out much better than plan A, but we always we had a good time and and everyone made it out alive and <laughs> most bikes made it out alive, so it was all good. As we found out, everything doesn't always go as planned, but we had great help on this trip. Yeah, I just wanna uh, give a, a big shout out to Fun for uh, lending us a brand new Defender uh, for these guys to carry around the camera equipment and to kind of hang, hang along with us for the ride. And then we had a built up demo Renegade, the Red Renegade out and that thing just rips. And you know, it was awesome to ride that having a backup bike. So, you know, mine went down, so it's pretty awesome. Not too often you get to hop on one that's built up just as much as yours and, and rip the rest of the day on that. So that was great to have. And when it came to built up bikes, I was interested to ask Dave just exactly how built up your rig needs to be to ride in this kind of terrain. You know, a guy doesn't have to dump $25,000 into a build and to be able to ride. I used to ride a pretty much bone stock Polaris and that's how I met a few of these guys actually. I just heard quads on a trail I knew about and they were having the worst time and I had no snorkels and I showed up in, in a t-shirt, shorts and, and like Crocs. Their eyes were this big when I pulled up with no snorkels because they just spent six hours making it these two kilometers. And I knew the area a little bit also, but basically I made it up to them in about 15 minutes and they were just like how in the, but that's, a, that's a, a big part of it, right? You don't need the biggest, baddest machine to, you know, to get out there. You might use your winch a bit more, but for the most part, you're keeping up with, with everyone else. So. Don't think you gotta come into the sport and get, get payments for the next 10 years to, to enjoy it. Like even a stock machine, you know, within reason, you can, do a, you can do a lot of stuff, or even if you just bolt on tires, you can do a lot of stuff just with that. At the end of the ride, I was really impressed with Dave and the Ostacruiser brand. I mean, he gets it. It's because of fans that he's here, and he has a lot of respect both for them and the companies who come on board to help him out with his big builds. Big part of it too is uh, working with great companies, being able to showcase their parts, uh, them helping you out uh, on say a new build like this is is that's another another part of it too. It's just really great to get support from an industry that you're really helping support also, you know, and, and uh, through the videos, you get a guy watching your video and he sees uh, something doing really well and the next day he's out buying, buying the same thing. So, and without them, you wouldn't be seeing half the build. You know, you'd be seeing very modest builds if it wasn't for uh, people helping me out along the way. Thanks for watching this latest segment of Dirt Tracks TV. For more awesome content, feel free to click any of the links on the screen or subscribe to our YouTube page where we update daily with great content on a weekly basis.